Hey guys, hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning or the afternoon or in the evening, I am glad you're here. If you're so inclined and you get the chance, please hit that subscribe button down below and the bell notification icon. It'll notify you when I release new videos, when I go live, and it will allegedly help me get my videos seen in front of more people. So today I wanted to do kind of a long-term review and jump in or a long-term overview into this Medford uh, Midi Marauder. The Midi Marauder is what I would consider a mid-size Medford knives. Um, Medfords are notoriously known to be overbuilt and thick. They're made in America. Um, Greg Medford has been in the game for quite a while and he's a very polarizing figure which is alright because everybody has the right to their opinion. We are in America. I'm here to talk about the knife and how the knife makes me feel and what I think about the craftsmanship, the quality, and the overall build and experience that this heavy overbuilt knife that I just failed gives me. So the Mini Marauder is unique in that Greg Medford builds very overbuilt knives and when I first started getting into the knife game and I first started seeing Medford knives, I thought and was pretty correct that they were all just huge knives. Um, Kevin left the EDC exposed me early on to the game through his videos on the Slim Midi, which is a, a Midi, a Medford Midi or Midi Marauder just in a very thin, slim package, um, which I love that knife. I'd actually picked it up. It's one that will go over here. And then I had uh, picked up an Infraction, which is one of the thicker Medfords with a deployment hole. And this particular knife kind of, to me at least, before I picked it up, and we'll talk about since I picked it up, was going to kind of fill the gap between a very thin Medford and a thin in the Slim Midi and the Infraction, which is a nice flipper. I like the shape of the Slim Midi. Um, the Marauder H is the full size version of the uh, Midi Marauder. So they do make this Marauder in a much bigger knife. It's one of Greg Medford's showcase knives. It's one that I would love to someday have in my collection, but in all truth, it would just be a novelty knife. It would not be a knife that would really, kind of like my Formax Scout, except, um, you know, bigger or about the same size. But anyway, the Mini Marauder, this particular version is very well done. If I'm not mistaken, this blade is S35VN. I think that's what the S stands for. Um, I think I've got two S35s and I think I've got my Slim Midi is an S90V. But if you go to the Google and check Medford's uh, blade steel markings, I think the S is S35VN, but I'm not 100% sure. But this is a deep hollow grind on the cutting edge here. I don't know if you can actually see the, the, the hollow grind that comes to this compound very thick tanto tip. This knife's also available in a drop point. I chose to get the tanto. Um, it is a frame lock, titanium frame lock knife that does not have a lot of weight relief built into it because again, this is a, what I consider an overbuilt, heavy, nice, let's see if I can get my lamp to come on. Why does it always do this? So see, when you look in those scales, those are solid titanium scales, no weight relief. I do like the way that Greg uses, keeps his lock bar on the outside smooth and cuts his relief cut on the inside. You'll notice that where the lock bar access, lock bar release is, you've got this chamfered out real nicely. Um, I like the way American manufacturing um, really beefs up. When I look at this compared to I don't have one in front of me, but in compared to an imported uh, titanium knife, to me it's just a different animal. This feels more raw, more organic, more American. Some people might say more blocky, but I call it more substantial. This knife allows me a full four finger grip on the handle. It offers me a very, very usable finger choil. 
that allows me to choke up and get a bunch of different grips on this knife from pinch grips to pull grips to push grips to gas station grips I mean this knife really covers all the bases in terms of the use of it I've been very impressed about when I bought this knife knowing how big it was I was under the impression that it would be more of a novelty knife for me that it wouldn't get as much pocket time as it has and I actually carry this knife quite often um, it carries very well in the pocket the pocket clip is very easy to get in and out of the pocket one thing if I do have a, a wish or a request these pocket clips work very well but they don't seem to hold to have a lot of tight retention and it's probably because the knives are so tight or so big and heavy and the clips are a little thin so when I put this in a pocket let's use this Hank Let's get it where you can see it you can see that it goes easily in and out of the pocket it does have a little retention and on jeans it has a little more but if I was going to do cartwheels with this big heavy knife um, it, it I would just like for it to have a little better retention I don't know if um, if there's a way that there could be maybe another clip offered that could kind of pair up with these Medfords I know that Greg's very specific about his designs and what he likes and I love the look of the clip as I put it in my jeans I mean it's in my pocket it's very well secured on the on the clip and if, as long as I'm standing up this knife is weighting itself down so but I can pull it easily out of my pocket and the clip seems to me like I, I would like it to have a little more retention but I love the action and don't know what all that would do to the design of the knife and it's not by any means a deal breaker every one of my Medford clips is the same that's why I think it might be cool if they came out with a different clip pattern that maybe had a little different, I don't know, a little different, a little different gig to it. So when we look at this knife, it is the quintessential overbuilt knife. The uh, pivot is a T25. All the body hardware is T10s, I believe check that I think that t8 was a little on the uh, small side there yeah so your body screws are t10s your um, hold on one sec guys your your um, your body screws are t10s your so you got t10s in the body and you've got this t30 I'm sorry t30 for the pivot so I had to pick these bits up. Um, I think I picked them up at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot just to do my pivot adjustments on the, uh, the MIDI Marauder and my Slim MIDI and my infraction. So if you are buying recent hinderers and you're looking for the tool to adjust that uh, pivot, it is a Torx T30. And I called them to ask them that. Um, and again, T10s on the body, T10s on the clip. So yeah, guys, a very overbuilt knife. You've got um, on this lock bar over travel, that's gonna be a T6. So you do have one T6 right there, T30, T10s. This uh, stop pin, you've got this huge stop pin built into the blade that locks right into the titanium on the handle and then you've got what I consider fantastic lock geometry where you're looking at about a quarter lock up um, if you look at the way that that blade tang interfaces with that lock bar it's just done very very well um, I, I think I think Greg Medford knocked it out of the park with this knife and again this is a knife that makes me feel awesome i carry it you can see some snail trails on it it's not a safe queen it's it's a banger guys these knives are designed to be used this tip is very sharp this transition on the tanto is just a great box scorer um yeah i don't know really um 
what what else to say let me do something that i've never done before that might turn out to be disastrous but we're just going to check it let's try to use our calipers or grateful panix calipers our blade thickness is right under a quarter of an inch at poor not point one nine point one eight so yeah guys this is um this is going to be a thicker knife point six so it's over half inch thick um just yeah so it's, it's a it's a beefy chunky handful of a knife but again i really really like it and let's do a couple of just quick size comparisons that might bring it into style and then we'll do a couple of key measurements look at it next to the cold steel Formax, which is going to be closer in size to the full size mini marauder and bigger than the mini marauder or the the full size marauder h let's look at it next to the civivi baby banter And I apologize, guys, but that oil is bothering me around that blade. That's one thing that's a little whack. Um, you can see the track there working into my blade. Let's look at this Medford Mini Marauder next to the Bitchmade Bug Out. You'll see there it's a little bit bigger than the Bug Out. And it's a little bit smaller, shorter than the paramilitary too. Now again, if you look at these two knives, or these three knives in thickness, you'll tell real quickly that the Medford is going to be much thicker. Let's compare it to a couple of American, a couple more American knives. Let's look at it next to the Spyderco shaman it's about shaman sized and a three and a half inch hinderer xm18 just a little bit smaller than the hinder xm18 and then finally what kind of influenced me to get the mid, the midi marauder let's look at it next to the drop point slim midi so if you look at those two knives guys the handles the stop pins everything is identical in templated size again this is the drop point hollow grind as opposed to the tanto that's why those are different. The clip is the same. The, uh, the finger cutouts and the jimping is a little bit different from the Slim Midi to the Midi Marauder. But you'll notice there the, the 9, that's the S90V. I'm almost positive that S is the S35. But where these knives really draw their own differences are the thickness. So again we won't beat a dead horse but the slim is going to come in about 0.4 thick as opposed to point six and the blade thickness whoops 0 0.19 0 0.12 so again the way i look at it is medford's designed a really popular knife that people loved in the marauder that he then made available in different configurations for EDC kind of carry use. And this knife to me is on the bigger side of an EDC knife, but I can tell you every time it's in my pocket, I feel great with it in my pocket. It is an overbuilt knife. It is up to any task 
whether it's taking my handy dandy coupon book and therapeutically cutting paper, or if it's opening Amazon boxes, or if to quote my brother Ray from Everyday City Carry, if I'm feathering sticks, this knife would do it. If I need to baton to split up some kindling, the blade is well suited for hard use work. Um, very simple construction. You've got two, two beefy pieces of titanium with some very strong, like I said, 10 thick uh, standoffs, T35 pivot or T30 pivot, frame lock knife with just fantastic lock geometry. Um, the knife's perfectly centered. I was expecting the, the first Medford that I brought into my collection was the infraction. I did not know what to expect. I did expect them to be a little more clunky than they were from what I've heard. I think they're on bearings now, um, which does make a lot of difference in the action. It is a very um, smooth, solid, just fantastic American made knife, guys. I don't care what people think about the person, and I realize it's gonna influence your decisions. Um, but everybody's entitled to their opinions, even if we don't agree with them. That's the beautiful thing about America. That's the beautiful thing about communities is people are allowed to have their views, their passions, and they're allowed to use whatever nonviolent form of expression to share what they feel is something that's important to them. Um, we all have passions that we're passionate about. And again, I don't agree necessarily with the politics and the musings of Greg Medford, but I can still look at him and say that is a man who has built a business by Americans for Americans. He's doing a lot in the knife manufacturing world in terms of exploring possibly purchasing a steel company to be a supplier for American knife makers with American steel. I think he's a patriot. I think he's very much someone who might have some misguided views, but he has them all in the greater good of what he feels like is the strength and the security and the freedom of our country. So um, that's not a rant, guys. I don't talk politics. I just see in the chats a lot that people either hate Rick Hinderer because of the way his shop foreman re you know, replied to Brian and some other issues that he's had, and people hate Greg Medford. I don't know if anybody hates Eric at Spyderco, but I'm sure that people have issues with different personalities. But just remember that it's a knife game, and look at the objective pieces and parts that go into what makes a knife worthy of your time and your money. And I 100% back you up, hug you, agree with you, if you do not want to buy from someone whose ideals don't align with yours. That is absolutely understandable, it's logical, and it is uh, it's well within what I think that everybody should have the freedom to do. But also think about what the country was founded on and people, as long as they're nonviolent and they're putting out alternative opinions, you don't have to agree with them. Um, you sure don't have to buy their products. You don't have to uh, hate on them either. And you don't have to let something that might cause you a lot of joy in terms of the tool that it is, um, just, just keep an open mind, guys. Most importantly, and what I ask you and plead with you to do is just continue looking out for the guy or gal to your left. Continue looking out for the guy or gal to your right. Look out for each other. Um, know that we're all different. We have different opinions. We have different political views, political stances, and we're very passionate about those, and that's okay. Just try to be tolerant with people that have opinions that differ from yours and use it as an opportunity to understand, learn, and love, guys. When it comes to the end of the day, we all like sharp things. They might be different. We all like spending time in YouTube videos and the chats. I love you all. I won't take any more of your time. Again, if you've got the time and are so inclined, please subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I love you all. Peace.